everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this triple tier slider card. Now this was requested by a few people, but I saw a message from Mel and she linked me to Stamp with Heather. She made hers quite a while ago and she was inspired by her son's birthday invitation that he received. So I've completely changed mine to how hers looked because I wanted to have the tiers, like these steps, visible when it's all closed and this will fit into a five by seven envelope. There are loads of versions out there where they have them completely concealed into the bottom tier, which looks really nice. And I think I might try that again in a future tutorial. But in my head, I had this kind of look. It's got the pull there, so it's really easy for the person to know what to do. And you just pull it up and it will reveal the three tiers. And I've got birthday wishes in the middle one. And I've just continued, this is using my scenes paper, I've continued the scene of the sky across the three tiers there. Now I've also, a bit different to the others, I've added a stand. I've got a thing about any kind of card that doesn't stand up. And um, this one originally was made to just be flat. You would rest it against something. So I've popped a little tent style stand there. So at least that way, you know, even if they've got it closed, it can be displayed, but it also does stay you know upright even when it's open as well i've also added my little swing here so it doesn't obviously swing freely well it kind of does actually you can see there it does move quite nicely but it was just a, a little interactive feature to add to the front there and i'll talk about that in more detail but you can decorate this however you want with all your beautiful pattern pa papers i think it's gonna look lovely so let me show you how to make it okay so i'll go through the tiered pieces first of all so this is the bottom one so this is a piece of ten and a half by five and along the ten and a half inch side, you just want to score, flip this one over, you want to score at five inches and ten inches. Okay. Then your middle tier, this is a piece of nine and a half by four, and you want to score at four and a half and nine. And this is the top tier, and this is a piece of four by three. So going back to the larger bottom tier. On the far left square, so you've got the little half inch section here, you want that on the right hand side. On the left hand side within this five by five square, I've done these pencil marks. If you've got a trimmer, you can just trim this, but if you don't, then I would recommend just drawing out what I've done here. So I've drawn a line at one and a half and three and a half all the way down. And then I've drawn a line across and that's half an inch down, okay? I've then got two little markers here along those one and a half and three and a half pencil lines and those come down let me just grab my ruler again to check yeah three and a quarter all right just put a little mark at three and a quarter down if you're using your trimmer just pop this in line it up at one and a half and start your cut half an inch down and then cut all the way down to three and a quarter and then move your trimmer along so you get to three and a half and again drop your blade down at half an inch and then cut down to three and a quarter. So that's for the base one. Then for this one here, which is your middle tier, again, you're working within that four and a half by four section. So again, I've got my little half inch tab here and there's the other fold just there. You wanna do a pencil line at one and a quarter all the way down and at three and a quarter all the way down. Again, you wanna do a pencil line half an inch down just come down each side and just join that up. And then these markers here are at two and a quarter down. Okay, that's everything there. And then just to kind of cover your workings, you've got one piece here, which is five by five. This piece here is four and a half by four. And then for the stand, again, this is optional, but this is eight and a half by four. And along the eight and a half side, you want to score at three six, seven, and eight. I've then got my pattern paper. So to cover that base one, this is four and three quarters squared. I'll talk through the papers in a moment. For the middle tier, this is four and a quarter by three and three quarters. And then this one here is for the top tier, which is three and three quarters by two and three quarters. For the tiers to be able to slide, you also want to cut yourself two strips of four and a half by a quarter. And I'm using the 300 GSM cardstock for all of this. Okay, so I've got a cutting mat here and using the base tier, the largest one, you want to cut starting from that half inch marker 
down to this marker here along both pieces. I've just kind of rubbed over those a bit more with a pencil so you can see exactly. But I'm gonna, what I would suggest you do is cut either side of the pencil line. So you're actually removing some of the bulk. It's just gonna mean you're gonna get a much smoother slide. So you'll see I'm just cutting down one side of the pencil mark and then I'm just gonna come over to the other side And cut that away and then I'm just going to cut just along the top and the bottom and then I'll be able to take that piece out if I just bring that up can you see you can probably see it better against the green on my mat but there's a gap there now I could probably get the ruler through I sure can get this one through here there we go so you see I've got that gap. It just means that it's going to allow for this strip to go through quite nicely and for it to slide up and down. So again, I'm going to do this one here. Okay, so that's that one done. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. So you, again, you're just starting from that half inch mark there where it crosses over down to your pencil line. So again, I'm just going to cut either side of the pencil line. Okay, so I've cut both of them. You want to grab one of these and you're going to go in the back and just pop it through like so. And then you're going to bring it right down to the bottom. Make sure you've got equal amount overhanging and just loosely wrap it around. Again, don't be really tight with that. You want it to move nice and freely. So just loosely wrap it around and then I'm going to use some of my quick grab glue and you just want to glue that together. Make sure it the glue doesn't go out onto this area here because you want this to move again really freely. Okay, and then I'm going to do again the same with the other one. So just slide that through, make sure you've got an equal amount overhanging and just loosely wrap it around. And just stick that together. Okay, next we want to decorate this with our pattern paper. So I've used two of my scenes pads here. So I've taken the this lovely background with the tree here. This is from the double slider woodland paper pad. This one's still in stock. The one I'm using on this one that I'm making at the minute is from the Swing Card Jungle Scenes paper pad. This one is on order. So that one will come back in. But like I said, that one's in stock at the moment. So I already went through the measurements of those. This one is, this is the largest one. It's going to go on the left-hand side where you've just stuck this and then this one is your middle tier so that's going to go in there and then this one is going to go on top of that piece like so if you do want to stamp in the middle like i have then don't stick that one down yet but because i've already done mine i'm going to get that down okay next you want to start sticking it all together so this is the middle tier and i'm going to attach the top tier to this so you want to turn it over you're going to work inside and i'm going to use red tape you can use liquid glue if you want but you just want to make sure again that the glue is not going to ooze out anywhere else apart from on that strip so i'm just popping it onto the back of that little strip that we just wrapped around and then you want to sit this down so it's sitting perfectly in the middle of this piece so if you sit it at the top first you can see i've got an equal amount either side here and then i can just kind of slide it down until i get to the top of that and then i can just sit it over like so and you'll see now when you turn that one over you're going to start to get that tear effect. Then with this one, I'm going to use my glue and I'm just going to run it all along here. And then I'm just going to kind of make sure it goes over that one and then just in there like so. You see now already we've got that top one. You can see how that slides up and down. Now we can take the bottom tier, turn it over, and again, you're going to run some tape along that little piece. Take the backing off. And again, pop it down. Make sure you've got an equal amount either side. Slide it down until it hits the top of that piece, and then just lift it over until it's flush with the bottom. Okay, and then close that over and you can see we've got the card nearly finished. Now, if you haven't stuck your pattern paper down, first of all, what I would do is slide it in so you've got an equal border and just mark the top of this piece on there very lightly. That way you know exactly, you know, 
where you can stamp below that and then if you open it up you'll see how that comes up put a pencil mark again then you'll know that area that you've got to be able to stamp your message and then stamp it and then just put some glue on and you can just sit it then on there before you stick this piece down so now i'm going to stick this piece down so i'm just going to pop some glue onto this piece here and again you just want to clip it underneath that middle tier and then just kind of wrap it around there like so just give that a minute to dry so next you want to add your little pull tab so when it's closed that will be six and a half inches high so by the time you add that if you've got half an inch overhanging then that's your seven inch you know height to sit in the envelope so i'm just going to i'll stamp it first so i've got my little pull here which is from the handbags shoes and handbags stamp set but you could use the pull from the christmas pop-ups or you might have your own or a little arrow or you can even write it on there if you want I'm just going to pop that down there. This is a one inch circle as well, which I just use with my circle punch. Pop my glue on the other half and then just going to make sure that's in the center. So whilst that's drying, I've got my stand. So you just want to fold. So you've got your two larger sections, fold that middle square so it's a mountain. And then you want to do another mountain a valley and then finish with a mountain you want that shape okay then you're going to add your glue along that half inch tab and you're going to stick that to the bottom of that other larger piece just make sure that lines up once that's grabbed just close the whole thing flat and you can just burnish that so now you've got that little tent effect and on the side where you've glued it together that's the side that I like to add my glue to then attach it to the card if you want to add some pattern paper on this as well you can but the idea is is that's where you'll now write your message before you stick that down you need to stick the backs of this on <laughs> which I'd forgot to do but you're meant to do it when it's all together so that's fine so you've got this piece that's five by five and you're going to attach that to the back there but what you want to do is I'm just going to check I might want to trim I'm going to just take a slither off of this all right and I'll put some glue back on that again in a moment but I'm going to just take the smallest amount just a little slither off of two sides and then that way yeah it's like a perfect fit now what you want to do is add the glue I'm going to add it onto this instead it's just a little bit along the top there and then you can come all the way down and you can go all the way under this piece here and then all the way up here if you like to make smaller cards then you can make these whole pieces which a lot of the tutorials are like that and I think the stamp with Heather hers is like that from one long piece so you don't have this as a separate but I like making the seven, the five by seven card sizes and um, I plan to do a six by six version as well. So I've done it a slightly different way, but just stick that down so it completely covers the back. But what it means is it's not interfered with that mechanism. So I can still pull that, but you can't see any of it anymore. And this one's gonna go in here, but it's actually slightly smaller than what I said. So you still want the, um four and a half wide but this needs to be three and a half so four and a half by three and a half i forgot to write that down when i was putting the other one together and that way it will hide again all of that there so i'm going to just run some glue along here up the sides along the top down there just make sure nothing gets in the way of that piece there and then that will just go inside and just slide it down. Nothing's going to catch because it's already, you can see how high it comes up. It's not going to come up high enough so that when it goes back down, it would catch. It's already hidden. But you'll see now that just hides that and it's still really nice from the front there as well. And then I can go back to the stand. So again, pop the glue there and then you just want to line this up with the bottom of the card. Make sure you've got equal amount on each side there close that down and just keep that there for a second 
Okay, so now whilst that's drying, I'll just open this one up. I'm going to decorate it. So I'm going to do similar there and I'm just going to talk you through how I attached this piece. So if you don't have my swing card die set, I have the swing card that I made about 18 months ago. I'll link that up there. The way that I attach that is the same way that you would need to attach this piece. So just check out that tutorial. If not, if you've got the dies, then you want to cut yourself the little piece here, the mechanism, and also the swing piece. Again, I've used acetate there. And then I'm using the cheetah and it's from the Just Chilling stamp set. So I've just taken him and the Just Hanging, no, sorry, the Slow Down, It's Your Birthday. So I've stamped that one there already. And then I've got the little sign there, but I've just found a little happiness stamp and I'm gonna have that down the bottom there. And then the little chimp there that I used in this one. And, oh, actually I used the same sign from that one. I used the Go Wild, but I took the, yeah, the little chimp there from that one. The, the Birthday Wishes, is this woodware one here, it's the middle one. I'll see if there's still people selling that one. And then the and then the dies, again, that's for the monkey and the cheetah. And then I'm using the little birds from my fabulous flight and I'm gonna stamp them on in a minute, you can see them here. All of the flowers are from the swing collection. So again, I've got all the flowers and the leaves there. I already have, all of these still die cut so I'm just going to work through those. First of all you just want to get this piece here, fold it in half just as you would if you were making a normal swing but rather than folding out to make the little wings at the top that I show you, you just want to put glue all along there. You end up trimming this off in a minute anyway and just stick it together so you've got the hole going right through and then I'm actually going to trim off. I'm going to come down under the line by about one eighth of an inch like so. I'm then going to use some foam squares here. I'm going to cut one in half and I'm actually going to stick them together. So I've got quite a thick piece there because I want the, that height so that this can swing. And then I'm going to just remove the backing. I'm going to stick that piece onto this. So that's all free still. And then I'm just going to grab a brad. So I've just got one there. And I'm just going to pop that through. And then I'm just going to, with the curve piece there, I'm just going to cut some of it off because you want that to be able to sit in there and not hit the foam. You see it's free from the foam there. And then with my pokey tool, yeah, and I'm just going to open up the split pin over the pokey tool, like so, just so it lifts that. And then I'm also going to snip the ends of the brad off as well, just so it doesn't hit the foam. So if I just hold that up there, just bring my lamps in a bit better. Can you see there? You just don't want it touching that foam piece. And then you can stick this now along the top of the bottom tier in the middle. You're going to cover this with your leaves and stuff so like so because now we've lifted it can you see that moves really easily now i don't need that whole length because he's going to be about there so i'm just going to snip away about a quarter of an inch off of my one there and then yeah he's going to sit perfectly so then i'm going to just run some tape and then just stick him down like so with my sign, I'm just going to put some foam on the top and then add some glue to the bottom. And that's going to go just there, like so. And now I'm just going to start decorating it with the flowers.
the finished card I've added the birds there as well I might just rearrange this one it seems to catch when I bring it down I think I'm going to stick that completely flat but I'll do that afterwards but again you can see there how that all slides out really nicely the cheetah's got a great swing to him completely optional but I just wanted to show you another fun way to add that to something this will fit in a 5x7 envelope but I've added all this dimension so I pop it in one of my 5x7 box envelopes I'll link them up here you've got so much space on the back this I was thinking you could this would be a great card for a work colleague so if you've got lots of people that want to sign they've got all that space but I like that it stands really well when it's open and also when it's closed so just slide those down there i think they're very very sweet i just bring that one up again so you can see there we go it's quite high i haven't actually measured how tall that is it's 11 looking at about yeah 11 inches I think that might be the one of the tallest cards i've made but i think it's really fun so i hope you've enjoyed this style from me today or my twist on the triple slider or triple tiered slider card. As always, thank you for watching. I'll link up some tutorials here, which are other slider kinetic styles that you might want to watch next. Also, if you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed the tutorial, you'll see a picture of my face here. If you click there, you'll be able to subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the notification bell, then you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Everything that I've used today will be linked in the description box below, and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.